Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Defense Grid by Forged by Geeks. Defense Grid is a one to four player tower defense game in which you're going to be making different types of boards with basically these different uh, pieces here, and you're going to then be placing them down uh, based on the different missions you can partake in in the game. There's 10 different missions and it's gonna work like this. Minions are going to spawn, they're going to move around the board, they're gonna try and basically take these little crystals from a certain point in the board and then return them to the exit. And if they can get all those crystals away, we're going to lose the game. Our objective is to try and kill all of those minions or those robots and make sure that our crystals go back to our base and secure them. And then we're going to score based on how many crystals we have left. After the first mission, you're gonna complete the next mission and so on and so forth. And as you do that, you're going to upgrade your characters. You're going to increase the different cards in your deck and basically get some bonus cards as well. Each of the characters do something different, provide something more useful or less useful, depending on what they do. Some are based on attack, others are based on specials, and then some are based on support. And then there's a mix in between. There's a bunch of different towers in this game, a bunch of different minions, and a whole plethora of beautiful different components in the game Defense Grid. Very similar to the popular board board game made by them. It does an interesting little job here. Let's go ahead and take a look at it down below. Then I'll show you basically a round of how it plays. And after that, I'll tell you what I think. So here is Defense Grid in all its glory. And as I said before, it's a tower defense game. And that is why you see these uh, modular boards here, all these pieces are put together based on the mission. And of course, that's why the game comes with this thick old mission booklet. When you open this bad boy up here, it'll show you the different missions, like mission one here, all the way through 10. Plus there's a bunch of additional missions on their website as well. It will tell you how to build the grid and then what uh, tiles need to be played on the grid and what areas. The types of aliens that are used and then how many aliens and what types will be used for each of the different waves there's seven different waves for each mission and depending on the number of players is how many different monsters will be added to the game missions changes additional things uh, for instance let's go ahead and pick another one it will tell you on the bottom left area here how many tower uh, what towers you get to utilize in the game uh, for this specific mission so it's kind of really neat how they added this it's very very nice very big nice spiral ring binder the game is also going to include a rules booklet that will give you all the information needed for the game. The game is not very complex at all, and it has a full-on appendix, appendix at the back of the book. Oh, that uh, you can go ahead and look at all the different types of cards in the game. So it'll show you the different uh, special cards and support cards and all that good stuff. And then there's a little separate sheet that they added for all the different tokens in the game that you can go ahead and add to the booklet. However you'd like to do that, whether you like to staple it, tape it, or just simply place it inside. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about all the components you see here. This is actually mission two, which is basically what we're gonna be playing at least for a round to show you how the game functions. Uh, and we will talk about all of the things. So first of all, you have these cards over here in characters. This is basically the bulk cards that the game is going to start with. These cards you can go ahead and utilize after the first mission. You can put them into your deck and then you can utilize them uh, as the game progresses. Some of them are gonna be useful, others won't, depending on the mission, based on the towers that you have available to you in that specific mission. There's also these special cards. You can earn the option to pick two uh, from this deck here, and then choose one to go into this deck after every mission is complete, basically giving you a new special card that you can add to somebody's deck, making it a little more powerful for you guys. You're going to have these big, thick cardboard uh, chits here that are going to show you all the different towers and their uh, levels, their rate of fire, the range, and then any special abilities they might have on them, and how they kind of fire. Some of them have a range, others kind of just pulsate around each other. Uh, you're going to have the different monsters here. These things are going to be running around uh, this area here, this grid, moving through this road here, uh, obtaining these little crystals here, and then, of course, escaping based on the movement to the exit. Sometimes it'll actually just circle around and go back, but it really just depends on the mission. There's six character decks the game starts with, and they all do different things, and they also have a character card that is upgradable. So there's a back and a front. This will show you the basic ability here on it. And then the back is gonna give you a bonus ability and you only have to use this after I believe mission five. Um, so add two resources for every alien destroyed this round. You, have to, you can kind of utilize this once around. Uh, in addition, it'll also give you a support card that'll tell you how you can upgrade him as the game progresses. It tells you how many attack cards, special cards and support cards are in his deck or her. 
and um, then how you can change it based on experience you get after succeeding a mission. You, and you can succeed a mission in three ways. It's bronze, silver, and gold, and based on how well you do is experience, in which you can add certain things, like increasing the rank towards certain cards, uh, changing your deck around, and of course, uh, you can use respec coupons after the third, sixth, and ninth rounds, allowing you to change your specialization for the character. All the character decks are a little bit different to make use of the different types. And the rulebook will mention what characters characters you should use depending on the number of players in a specific game but you can go ahead and of course choose whatever you'd like. The game will also come with a ton of these little uh, plastic uh, standees that are going to be these things here that are attached to the monsters or the robots I should say and uh, you'll be utilizing these to move around the board as you can see on the board here there's already two there's a lurker and a walker and it tells you the movement how many cores they can hold at any point in time and their armor if they have any and you're going to point the arrow in the direction they are moving and the arrow is going to be obviously changing throughout the game and you'll use these little stands for tokens and those tokens are found over there there's going to be hp shield uh the slow there is all kinds of different little things that you can use that you put on here as well as of course when they take the cores you can actually slide them and put them on here as well uh these are all the different towers in the game along with a couple over here oh they're gone they're over here again or the couple over there as well there's also these big fat uh stands here that will allow you to see over other towers and whatnot really cool there's some little cards here that'll give you references there is a board over there that will show you how many resources you have you'll be using that little uh raspberry there to determine how many resources you have because you'll be utilizing cards in your hand and whatnot not. And then back there is additional can other all the towers will be using and um uh, upgrading towers, which will be for these things here. You can upgrade a tower from second to then third, uh, based on the costs over there. And then these are the specific uh, robots for the mission and then additional tiles and whatnot that you can use for missions three, four, five, six, so on and so forth. And that's pretty much what you get in the game. There's quite a lot to show you here, but the game is very, very simple. And uh there is only really two parts. There's the main game, and then, of course, between mission to mission, you'll be doing your upgrades and your experience and all that. But anyway, that is pretty much what you're going to get in the game. Defense Grid, a lot. And as you can see, it looks really cool. So now we're going to take a closer look at Defense Grid, and I'll explain it in a little more detail, and then I'll show you how basically a round is going to go. There's not a lot that goes on as far as how the rounds go, but there's a lot to show you. So the first thing is this board here. And based on the fact that we're doing the second mission, I went ahead and set it up. And as you can see, it shows you the different numbers and symbols and whatnot. So 16C goes there, and this is 16C. EA goes there, and this is EA, right? Pretty simple. It tells you the tiles you need, the mission, the individual mode points, and of course, the towers that you're permitted to use. Over here, all the towers you're permitted to use. And I went ahead and also set up how many shots they get per round so these little red markers indicate that this little thing that is added tells you what all the different little tokens do for instance over here these are five hp and then you got stuff like this which is going to be one hp you'll add them onto the little to uh, little stands over here that will indicate how much health the units have you're going to have these blue tokens which indicate shields which means they need to be taken down irregardless of how much damage you do to a unit after one attack it will just remove one shield whether it be one damage or whether it be a million damage it doesn't really matter then you're gonna have these shot tokens here one shot token like I explained before will go on each of these for how many shots they have per round when you utilize a shot it goes off when you utilize all of them you can't use any more for that specific type so if I had three uh, inferno car inferno uh, sorry if I had three inferno activations but it only had two shots on it I can only use two of those cards stealth tokens are added to units that have stealth and it just looks like that. Whenever a unit has stealth, the only thing that can hit it is going to be towers that are adjacent to it. And you're also going to have slow tokens. Aliens with tokens that have been slowed by temporal towers or support cards will have a slowing effect. Maybe they get stopped or whatever. And then, of course, core tokens. You're going to set this thing on this one over here where the robots are going to acquire these and return them. And you place them all in here. It depends on how many... Uh, support tokens on each stand but for the second mission it's just one of these stands here with these 12 on here as well pretty simple then these just tell you how you can go ahead and set the standee with the tokens but really it's up to you how you'd like to do that i'll go ahead and move this off the board now let's talk about the board you have these spaces here and these ones here these are all just basic spaces this indicates a road and each of these little uh, hexes indicates one space these are going to be where you can place your towers and these here are basically walls they're really tall walls walls in which if you have a turret here and maybe had like let's say had a million range it could not shoot over this wall because it's not tall enough 
But if you had built a, a one of these boost towers and then you build a turret on top of it, then you can see over these walls here and you can attack. However, multiple boosts will prevent line of sight from other boosts. So for instance, this one cannot see past this one, thusly it cannot hit this tile here. Pretty simple, I imagine. Like I explained before, over here is basically where they're going to, the robots are going to acquire cores. And I'll just go ahead and give you an example. If this had a hundred million movement, it can move all the way along this track. It would then turn left here. It would stop here. It would take one of these little guys here. It would put it on it and then it would continue and it would then leave the board exiting this way. And that would be one of your victory points or one of your victory uh, little tokens that has been removed from the map. You want to make sure you don't lose these as best as possible. If this wasn't here, uh, it would just simply go this way and it would return back from whence it came. Make sense? I hope so. Uh, the rest of this is pretty standard. There's a little exit tile that goes here. And of course, there's multiple other tiles that we're not using currently in this game. Depending on the number of players, it's how many cards you're gonna to get to draw at the beginning of the game. In a two player game, which is what I set up for, you get five cards. You're also gonna have this thing here. And because we're playing the second mission, I went ahead and upgraded all of the Inferno and gun towers for getting gold on my last mission. On my last mission, you get six points and it'll tell you in the rules how many points you get depending on how well you do. It shows you back here on this card. And uh, then you can go ahead and utilize those points here. Over here, is going to be for your supports, whether it be from gun all the way to missile towers. And then of course, special cards as well. Uh, you're gonna have three ranks, novice, elite, and uh, this master class over here. Uh, as an example, let's go ahead and just show you one really quick. This is an overcharge special, which is down here. Um, if I had upgraded this from here to here, it would then be an elite and I could use this ability as opposed to this one. That is all that means as far as upgrading in between each of the games you're literally going to play. In addition, you can go ahead and spend points in here to give yourself bonus cards, also reducing cards from other areas to change your deck. Everybody's deck is different. And this guy here, Fletcher, he's got 12 attack cards, three specials and a support. And he has three respects based on rounds as well. Uh, everybody also is going to get an individual ability. And as far as I know, the rules don't tell you, but I'm assuming that you can utilize these abilities once per game and you can't use them on the starting space. Now it doesn't say that and I, in the comments, if you uh, made the game or know for, for a fact what the rules are, let me know. I'm actually pretty interested to know, but as far as we play this is you cannot use these abilities on the starting space. And in addition, you can only use these once per, per mission. Uh, but they do different things, slowing, stunning, dealing damage, and all that great stuff. Over here is a movement die. Before units move, you roll this die here, and depending on the number it gives you, it will give you an additional movement for all of the monsters here. He has a movement of five, but I, because I roll a plus one, he'll move one, two, three, four, five, and six. So that's how this movement die works. It rolls for every single unit that is an enemy every single time they go to move. These are die that you'll be using for bonus damage. Like I showed you before, that overpowered turret. Normally turrets will do a certain amount of damage and it'll tell you over here what they do. For instance, if there's a level one gun tower, it'll do one damage and it targets an alien in a single space in range. And if it, you will have maybe, uh, let's say you leveled it to level two, you'll have one damage plus one of these dice in which you'll roll. And if it hits this, it's nothing. If it hits this, it's additional damage. So bonus damage, pretty good. And that's why you wanna upgrade these towers there. Um, and then of course I have additional shield and slows over here that we'll be utilizing for the different characters. And then over here is going to be the board. This is gonna be how many resources you start with, whether it be for four players, you're gonna get eight, or whether it be for one player, you'll get 19. And there's a spread in between there as well. Resources will let you buy certain things. Gun towers are worth four, infernos are worth five, so on and so forth. It tells you what they're valued at and all the different towers. And you can only buy the towers that are available to you in each mission, along with, of course, these, which are basically towers. They're the little boosts. And then it tells you how much it costs to upgrade them from five to, to uh, from level two to level four three for five and for 10. It's pretty simple. If you built a tower, you can then upgrade if you'd like, and it'll cost you five. You place this on there, and then you're gonna be using the second level, for instance, right here, as opposed to the first. And then after you level from the second level, you can then flip it over and level it to the third level, giving you an increased damage and potential increased die roll boost. So that is for that. Down here, it tells you all of the aliens involved or the robots involved in the game. It's gonna show you basically how much, much it moves every round in addition to using this die here, the resources you earn when you destroy it, the armor it has, so if you do four damage to this unit, you will only actually do two because it will subtract from the armor. The cores it can carry, so for instance, if this walker here can carry one and it gets here, it's only going to take one, it can only take one of these 
uh, always. That is always the rule, no matter how many cores he can carry. But let's say that there was a core on the ground here, and there was one in here, and he had 10 movement from here. He can move here, select one of these, put it on him, and then continue moving, and then he can take this one as well, thusly holding multiple cores. But otherwise, the aliens will only be able to take one of these guys in here at any point in time, regardless of how many cores it can carry. But with more cores comes availability to pick up more on the ground. Then you're going to have hit points, and that's based on the number of players. In a one-player game, this guy has six health, in a two, six, in a three, seven, in a four-player eight, and any special abilities, like the rhino's pretty cool. When you roll the die for the rhino, if you get a number like this, it will double that movement, thusly making it go plus four. And in the Rhino's case, that will actually make it move eight, which is double its normal movement. Uh, you're going to have different uh, requirements for each of these things. Let's go ahead and find one to show you How about this guy here. He's got a red symbol, which means he has a special rule that you need to follow. And then he's also got a green, a little, a little like a rainbow, I guess you would call it which tells you he has armor. There's all these different little rainbow symbols that will tell you different things about the mon the monsters, aliens, robots. I keep saying these weird things, but they that will basically allow you to know what they have on them. Even if you don't know exactly, you can go ahead and look at the cards over here. All of those are the ones that are available in this mission, but there's, like I said before, more that you can go ahead and uh, add as you progress throughout the game. And that is pretty much everything you're going to need to know. There's also these little upgrade tokens here, cards here that will tell you how they function. And uh, now let's get into the basic idea of the game. This is going to be the thing you're going to be utilizing to understand how the turns work. And this is what you're going to be utilizing to understand armor rules and, of course, shield rules. I explained shields already. Whenever you do damage to it, regardless of the amount of damage, for each time you do damage, it removes a shield until there are no shields, then you can penetrate the health. Armor is, if it has a certain amount of armor on it, like two armor, and you did five damage, it would then do three. It shows you three damage minus one equals two HP damage to the core. This is the game phase. You're going to draw cards up to your maximum hand at the beginning of the game, and then you're going to play any actions you'd like. There's different actions you can do, such as discarding cards from your hand into the discard pile of your deck, because everybody will get their own deck, and thusly you're going to gain resources on this track here. Uh, another one is building a tower. You can spend resources on this track to build any of these towers in any of these spaces here. Uh, you can also go ahead and upgrade a tower for the two different costs. You can place one of these guys um, on a, an existing tower to upgrade them to level two and thusly then after that level three. Uh, and you can go ahead and sell a tower for half the cost or simply play a card from your hand like activating an Inferno Tower. So if you had an Inferno Tower out, which I think is, uh, let's see if I can figure out which one is which. I think this is the Inferno Tower. If this is placed here, you can activate the Inferno Tower, and if there's a monster in the th in, a th in, in adjacent spaces, it will then do damage to them, uh, and that is going to allow you to do damage. You'll have to take one of these red guys off here and thusly do what the card says. Sometimes people are going to have special cards that you can go ahead and add to it, or support cards that you can go ahead and add that will give you additional damage or special effects that can affect the tower and how it hits the monsters. Pretty useful. There's also additional special cards that'll do stuff like combustion or allowing you to do extra damage to minions or attack multiple minions in a single area. And that is how you're going to be playing cards the most part in the game. Then after you go ahead and do that, you're going to go ahead and uh, return any cores. So for instance, let's say an alien or a robot got over here and died by a tower like this one here. This core is then going to go back three spaces towards the space that actually holds them. So basically they're going to always come back if you destroy the monsters or the robots or aliens or mutants or <laughs> you get what I'm saying. And uh, any of the uh, robots will be able to pick these guys up if they're moving around and they can then go ahead and carry them off. So that's why they kind of sit there and kind of slowly go back onto this area here. After you've returned any cores to here or down to the board closest to here as they can get for three, then the aliens are going to move. You're going to roll this die here and then you're going to say, okay, uh, that's going to give me plus two movement and I'll move these aliens uh, five plus two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And after that, then all you're going to have to do is uh, do any of the cleanup stuff. Like, for instance, the next round, you'll need to go ahead and see what robots are going to be needed. Let's go ahead and move these a little bit, I guess. Uh, for instance, in the round two, it'll tell you you need a bulwark and a walker. 
And so you're going to place them over here. And then after that round, wave three and four and five, six, seven. After the seventh wave, no more monsters will spawn, but they're going to continue to move around the board until they are all destroyed, at which point the round will end and you'll score based on how well you did. After wave after wave three, four, five, six, and seven, I give you give, give you a bonus health for each of the monsters, depending on the number of players in the game. So for instance, in wave three, uh, if you're playing just one player, all of these guys get plus one health. In wave five, all of them get plus one, plus one, and then plus two for wave seven. That depends on the number of players you're playing with. And that is pretty much how you play the game. I can go ahead and show you around really quick, because why not, right? This is a really cool looking game. I'm sure you want to see how around works. And we're just going to go ahead and start it off. So uh, we went ahead and already set it up. We've got our walker here with six health. And we've got our lurker here with four. And the lurker has stealth because he's got that little white symbol there, which means he can only be attacked by adjacent towers. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and uh, draw our cards. We've each got our five cards already. And uh, we're going to go ahead and look at this thing here. And we're going to be taking our player actions. We're going to need to build certain things here. So for instance, I could build... Uh, let's go ahead and build this gun tower right here, I suppose. And that's going to cost us over here four. One, two, three, and four. And then let's go ahead and build. We've got ten more. So we can go ahead and build a inferno tower. That would be pretty sweet. Um, and I think it is... Which one is it? I can't ever tell which ones are which for these. Is it this one here? No, that's that's the Tesla. I mean, maybe it's this one. It's hard for me to... No, no, it's it, the Inferno Towers have two. So this might be the Inferno, and this is probably the Gun Tower. I think that's what it is. And in which case, uh, you're going to then go ahead and spend your five... One, two, three, four, five. And that's... Uh, I got five left. So I can choose, if I want to, to discard some cards in my hand. So I've got an Activate Inferno. I'll keep that, because I can use that later. I didn't make... I don't. We didn't buy a laser, so I guess I'll go ahead and discard these two cards to my discard pile, and that will increase our resources. I've got an activate gun, so I'll keep that. And uh, I have an activate any tower, so I'll also keep that as well. These are actually some pretty good cards. Uh, discarding them might be useful as well if I want to gain additional resources for the next round, but I like having cards I know I can use in the next round. And then, of course, this other player here has uh, some supporting gun towers. He'll save that. A supporting inferno tower. He'll save that. And then he's got some special uniques. Bonus resources, activate any tower, and overcharge. These are all perfect. He's going to save these as well, I suppose. And uh, we will simply go ahead and move on. We'll go ahead into the return core phase. There's no cores that are on the board, so we don't need to return any. Aliens will then move. We'll roll these guys here. They don't move any bonuses. And then these guys are all going to take five spaces. One, two, three, four, and five. Perfect. After that, you're going to add the new wave. We'll go ahead and look at here. It says a bulwark and a walker. Let's go ahead and find these really quick, if I can. Here's a walker, and he's going to need a total health of uh, two players, six HP. Boop, and boop. And he'll go over here. And then a bulwark. Let's see if I can find one of these guys really quick. Here he is. This guy actually has some... Uh, some shields it looked like. It'll tell you in a two-player game he has two shields, oh, which I already actually put on there, which is nice. And then additionally, he's got uh, four HP. One, two, three, four. Okay, so these are going to go on there just like that. Right. And then they'll be placed here. And that will be all the placement needed to be done for that. And then you're going to simply go ahead and uh, end the round in which players will draw back to their maximum hand size. And in a two-player game, that's five. This player, I don't think, discarded anything. So he's keeping everything. And then we're going to actually start playing cards. Uh, and I'll go ahead and show you how towers work. That's the last really relevant thing. Remember, they have uh, certain rules for the towers here. For instance, uh, let's go ahead and look at the gun tower. This is the gun tower. It has a rate of fire, which is three, which means it can be activated three times, and a range of two, so it can go one and uh, it can go up to two. So one and two, or just one, one and two. And it's only prevented by line of sight, which is going to be these guys here or other towers in its height range. It's a level one, so it'll do one damage. So let's uh, let's go ahead and leave it like that, I suppose. And then um, it fires at targets in range. And then the other one we have is the Inferno, which I'll go ahead and just bring that over here. And this one here uh, was actually going to do damage uh, to these two spaces here, if there are units that would do it to both of them, and it tells you the amount of damage they do. So in this case, we'll be using the gun tower. Tower, and uh, uh, I'll go ahead and just place them. So I'll activate. I'll activate this gun here, and it's got a level one of one damage. And then this player over here, he can actually play cards on my cards. So for instance, I can go ahead and play a overcharge tower there, 
and uh, shrapnel bullets. Uh, that one actually will say it, it attacks all targets in the hex, but because it has been upgraded, he chose to upgrade his gun tower, he can attack all units in two hexes that are connected. In this case, it doesn't matter, but it can attack two units, it can attack two units in both of these hexes, so that'd be pretty cool. So uh, let's go ahead and we're gonna add this die here. That's, not what this, this, that's what this one says here. He'll roll the die that does a bonus damage plus a single damage for a level one tower. That does two damage to both of these guys. So in this case, this guy would go down to from six to four and this player would go down from four to two. And remember that this guy can only be hit when he's adjacent to a tower by that tower. Otherwise he's hidden by other towers. These are all gonna get discarded. This is going to get removed for attacking. So now he only has two attacks left with that gun tower and players are going to get, keep going. Remember to discard your cards into your own discard piles and the rest of the cards you can go ahead and save because maybe you'll utilize more of them. I can activate another tower if I want. So maybe I'll activate this one again and I will then also activate it one last time, thusly removing all of its shots, destroying this unit that is uh, close to the tower, scoring points so this is a lurker and lurkers are going to give me three credits for de defeating them boop 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 and then this is going to go away and uh if i want i can then end and we will continue the game just like that they're going to move around the board trying to get here and by the time the seventh round comes and ends after all the units have been killed and moved off the board depending on how many of these you have left you'll score and you'll go on to the next mission if you'd like otherwise the game is over and that is the basic idea for defense grid I think I went ahead and explained pretty much everything in this game. Hopefully that gives you enough to understand the basics of play for the game. Uh, defense grid. All right, so caveats. First caveat is after all of your cores have been removed and then are off of the board, you lose the game. Second caveat is uh, you can go ahead and make your deck how you would like to after every round based on the conditions followed on your card here. And then you'll also get to upgrade your character based on how well you did, which you can show on the back here. There's some sleeves that are included in the game. You'll put the sleeves over. That way you can reuse the card again by writing on the sleeves instead of, instead of these cards. Smart idea. And then of course, there's special cards. After every round, you'll draw two from a special deck, select one of them, put it in the main deck, and then anybody can use that card provided they follow the rules on their card. It'll tell you eight to attack, seven special, eight support or whatever. And you can switch that number up based on your experience points you gain and then there's th the three different bronze and silver and gold that you can gain uh that's pretty much it that explains how to play the game uh, probably without even having to read the rule books if i explain it correctly enough for you let's talk about my review of the game Defense Grid is, is an excellent tower defense game. It is hands down the best personification of a tower defense game I have played, the best represents games from StarCraft in the custom AI settings to Balloon's tower defense to probably any tower defense game you've played on a mobile device. You are literally having the monsters move from one portion of the board, collecting the cores and then moving off. It feels like you're at a race for survival. Every single round, the game ramps up and you see the damage ramp up, the monsters get more scary and it becomes more of a uh, twist as to how survival is going to work in the game it is very challenging but it is also very fun there's a lot of customization in the game there's a ton of towers and there's a ton of monsters that you can go ahead and try and defeat there's also quite a few different little added bonuses like dealing with stealth monsters and slowing them and how many attacks each of your towers can do based on the range and all that good stuff it's all there and it all really really reminds me of playing a tower defense game not only that but i love the fact that they have the maps on the board and you could probably make your own map if you really played the game enough you could make your own tower defense map and just simply play that one mission based on the own rules that you want so kind of customize your game not only that though but the bonus missions they provide on the website that's a really cool little idea i like the fact that they said that the next two years after the campaign's coming out they'd be releasing new and new, more and more stuff i haven't really checked all of that out because i haven't even got past the first 10 missions but so far really really good a ton of guards as well and then adding a single special and a single support onto a basic attack or activation card that's really cool too which is another caveat you can only add one special and one support to each activation you play or somebody plays but nevertheless I, I like how they can customize the towers abilities based on how you choose to play as a team now overall this is a solitaire style game you don't need four players to play this game and sometimes playing four players you can have that alpha gamer mentality where somebody knows how to play better than others and will tell them how to play and of course that kind of stuff um, I guess good ways to avoid doing that are simply not really talking about too much what's in your hand you'll be like I'm gonna play a gun tower because I want to do I want to do this and then somebody else can be like well I'd like to boost that with this card here 
But if you want to work even more cooperatively and you don't have that alpha gamer in your group, you could simply go ahead and say something like, oh, uh, what do you have? And what do you have? And I have this. Okay, let's do our best to make the combination. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? And if you have players that are like that, it's best to work cooperatively like, like, like that. But you can go either way. And the towers are way different in their own unique ways. The infernos do damage certain ways. The cannons are really strong from far away. Teslas will do damage to multiple units as you progressively upgrade the support cards and whatnot. Awesome. All of that's really, really great. Even how you build certain things is a lot of fun. Um, it's... I have a couple critiques, I guess, which is so funny because I don't even know if they're fair critiques, really. This little base here provides your unit and it tells you all you need to know, really. There's only one of them that actually doesn't do a, a phenomenal job. One of them doesn't actually have the rainbow on it for uh, for the uh, armor or whatever, but it's not that big of a deal. Uh, nevertheless, you uh, place these little things on here, right? And you're gonna be taking them off as you re remove them. They can be kind of, it's kind of cool at first, but it can get kind of tiresome after a while. That being said, it is the best way I've ever seen a tower defense game do this. And it's really hard to say what a better way is other than this way. I mean, you could say it simply suggest cards on the side of the field and then you can remove the points off of them. This actually feels more true to how a tower defense game would be. It does damage to it, you pull the damage off of it, and you also see everything attached to the character. So is that a fair critique? That'd be up to you, but I can see how having to pull the things off and pull them back on, and there's probably a better way to do it um, than simply how we did it, but it, nevertheless, it can be kind of tedious. Uh, then you also have the small amount of RNG. I just dropped one of the movement die, <laughs> but the movement die is a plus one or a plus two, and then there's blanks. That can be pretty random. You expect something to go to a certain place, and in fact, it doesn't go there, and best laid plans are destroyed. Not only that, but then you have this die, which is basically a 50-50 for additional damage. This can be great by doing two additional damage when you roll two die, and can be very, very hurtful when they don't roll what you need them to roll. So there is a bit of chance added to this game, or in a normal tower defense, for a video game at least, there's pretty much no luck involved. You know what's coming, and you know what you have, um, but, I don't mind it so much. It's just critiques on the table. Everything else though, like the, the design of the game, the artwork in the game, the quality of the products, all of these different inserts and whatnot that they've provided are really, really great. This is really well done. They added extra spaces for each of these. So when you put these guys on these, on these things here, they can stay there. They don't have to come off. That's excellent as well, including all the shields and whatnot. You can all leave it all in the box. The additional missions, everything, solid. All of the different um, chits and whatnot. These are very, very sturdy pieces, really well done. I didn't have an idea what this what this raspberry was for for the longest time that I found the rules. So if you're watching this video, now you know. The strawberry is just specifically for the resources. Overall, this is an excellent game. This definitely gets my seal of approval. Like, hands down, just for being the best tower defense game I have played so far that is based on um, playing video games, it just, it recreates that for me. And I really, really like that about this game. Uh, solid, solid game. Definitely check out the game Defense Grid if it's interesting to you. And of course, you can check out the video game that's best represented by this, which is probably why they know what they're doing when it comes to making a Defense Grid board game. That's also a really good game that I actually went ahead and played too before making the review to see how close it was. And they're very, very similar, which is a great, great thing because this game is really, really well liked as a video game and now really, really liked as a board game. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this game, Defense Grid, go ahead and check it out uh, down below in the description. It's just currently out, available for you. It was on Kickstarter, did very well, and for very, very good reason. You can also go and check out the video game if you like tower defense games. That's also very, very solid. It's gotten a lot of accolades, and for good reason. So I'm just really, really excited to get this game. I didn't, did not expect this when they said we're gonna give you a tower defense game. This has the whole kit and caboodle, if I'm saying that right, and uh, it, it just does an excellent job. I'll also go ahead and check out my site, unfilteredgamer.com, to the blog post, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. It does help me, as well as the creators of the game, and hit that notification bell if you want to see more videos like this one. Also, don't forget to check out our friends, everythingboardgames.com, and the giveaway geek. We're giving away, um, we're giving away Wingspan but we might not be at this time. But you can still go ahead and check out our site. I'm sure we have some giveaways for you to go ahead and pick up. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week. I will see you guys next time on The Defense Grid.